from Bifaco, the Morph Fader. It's a four channel crossfader with a global crossfade for all four channels, but they also work independently. And we'll see all that it can do once I've built it. But right now, let's just build it. I'm gonna put the panel aside. Have a sip of my tea. Mm. And look at this, the board comes with all of the SMD already in there. So it's basically going to be a hardware job. Regardless, we will have a look at the manual. Hi, Bifaco. Thanks for choosing one of our semi kits. This is a semi kit. This is a quite complex build if you're not experienced. Oh, so even though it's only mechanicals, they're still considering it a fairly advanced kit. I guess it has a lot of hardware to install. So let's start with the mini jacks. Kinkas, you didn't look at the manual. You're not supposed to start with the jacks. Oh well, I guess we're just gonna have to try to install the power header without these jacks falling off. And here we go. Just uh, one first, and then Make sure it lines up and reflow it. So just applying pressure to it with your finger is usually enough to snap it into, and it is already. It wasn't necessary in this case, but it's just good rule of thumb. And now let's solder the rest of it up. The trick here is that both things you're trying to solder together need to be hot enough to melt the solder. So it bonds with it and makes a shiny connection that usually looks like a little volcano. Little solder volcanoes. See? Now if one isn't hot enough, then you have a cold solder joint that can that just looks like it's connecting them, but then it could easily break off and you have a a problem to solve. Okay. Let's put on the fader now, which we need to solder from the other side. You know what, I usually do this last, but in this case, since I'm going to cover it up, I'm gonna make sure that there are no shorts in my power connection. So a good visual inspection first is a good idea. It doesn't look like it, but to be sure, I will use my trusty multimeter in uh, continuity mode. and make sure there are no shorts between rails. Between negative and ground, there is not. Between negative and positive, there is not. And between positive and ground, there is not. Good. Now we can cover that up. Plug those jacks that fell off back in. That was only two of them, three of them, not a big deal. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess that next is switches. Indeed. What does it say about the switches? Place the switches in their right places, but don't solder them yet. Right places, so it doesn't look like they have a particular polarity, right? As long as it fits it fits and they snap on pretty good, so that's nice. There they go. Four buttons. Okay. Those I'm pretty sure choose be the response between audio and CV for the crossfaders. So it's equal power for audio, if I understand correctly, and linear for CV. Okay, now the pots. And it looks like they're all 100K linear pots, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one goes where. 
times. Wash away. Recycle the baggie. Couple, couple other baggies here to recycle. Get these out of the way. We need to work in a clean area if possible. So let's put in the pots. And these are the usual Bufaco style pots. The LEDs now. That's that's quick. That's the thing about these semi kits. They're still fun to build, but it's unlikely you have to troubleshoot anything. For one, because all of the trickier electronic stuff. I mean, if you do, it's gonna. If you do have to troubleshoot, it's gonna be like a a short and a potentiometer leg or an inverted LED, like something easy and kind of dumb you don't have to be like tracing and that's the thing too though you know if you really want to learn then you would get a full kit not a semi kit and uh, beyond that try to actually read about the circuit look at the schematics if they're available and uh, if you have to troubleshoot then that's a blessing because then you really have to actually you know, bring in the multimeter, maybe even the oscilloscope. Uh, you make a little signal tracer and uh, and really learn about the circuit and see what's happening and find out why it's not doing what it's supposed to do. You have to know what it's supposed to do, each part of the circuit. So that's yeah, that's fun too. These days, I'm more focused on my music, and uh, I love all of the electronics, but I, I prefer practical things that let me get going quick with making sounds, but I still enjoy the practice of soldering and assembling and all that. And the job is to wiggle this, the panel, So it, all of the jacks and pots and switches go through it, through the holes. This, uh, something's a little bit stuck over here. That's when you might need the help of some kind of tool where you see that there might be a stuck jack or something. That almost did it. I think just something up here. Yeah, the pot was a little slanted. There we go. Okay, now I'm holding it all together to make sure nothing slips off or falls off. And the order to screw in the parts is mini jacks, then pots. Okay, so. to have them fairly flush to the panel so what I do is I just put my finger plug the hole with my finger and find oh there's no need with these because these LEDs actually have a shoulder that stops them from protruding any further so yeah no need for any any tricks just stick them in their hose just like that okay and it looks like they are, they're all in there. Yep. Good. Well, let's go ahead and solder this up. Can I zoom in while it's filming? Yeah, there we go. And I'll bring my magnifier in. Because 
I work much better with magnification. My hands get steadier. It's a really interesting effect. Not just about seeing better, it's about having uh, a steadier hand as well. Ah, here we go. Found these two. These are not electrical. Well, they're ground, but uh, mainly they ground the pot body and hold it in the PCB. So I think the circuit would still have worked, but it's just better. Okay, let's cut off these uh, LED leads. What a fun build, fun, easy. Well, kind of easy. And uh, easy if you're good at soldering. Cool, that's, oh. Not done yet. Gotta finish these banana nuts, tightening them in. And there's not much now, it's just that last little squeeze to keep them there without coming loose. Okay. With the pots it's easier because the pot shaft helps you line up the two. See here it's see, it's kind of slips off, you have to be careful. It can hurt the banana itself. There you go. Yeah, the magnifier is helping even with the with this part All right now. It's certainly helping me line up the gap on the nuts with the protrusion, protuberance <laughs> in the tool. There we go. Have I already done these? All right, so now I'll turn all of the pots counterclockwise and put in their respective knobs. Wow, oh, look at that. They're multicolored knobs, how fun. So do I get to choose how they go? Okay, and look at that. Looks like we're done. How pretty. What a beautiful module, and this is gonna be fun. Switches feel great. These pots are actually, they have less torque than in previous Bifaco pots. Like in my hex mix, they're a lot tougher to turn, which is okay, you get used to. But I kinda like this new torque. Very nice. That's it for now. Stay tuned for the demo video coming soon. See you soon and stay noisy.